Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I am the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. I'm going to do a video today about uh, gender, biblical gender equality again. I need to do a video for my um, Facebook page called The Mystery of Adam, and of course that's also the name of my book. And what I'm going to talk about today is not specifically in my book, but um, my book is about um, biblical gender equality and as you know if you have followed me I have a lot of new subscribers and if you have followed me um, lately I have talked about great deceptions of the end times and the past 2,000 years we have been dealing with great deceptions this is not just happening right now. Uh, as you have seen in some of my videos, the, decepts, the, the deceptions, they existed not only after Christ came, but even before Christ. There were great deceptions and there were wolves in sheep's clothing um, amongst the Jews and, of course, the Israelites as well. The reason why the Israelites went astray and committed idol worship uh, was because of the false teachers that uh, misled the people. And so even when God sent them into captivity and most of the tribes didn't even return, only, of course, uh, the Jews or Judah returned, they continued to follow these false teachers and so there's lots of deceptions uh, deception going on before Jesus came in terms of doctrine and theology you know how Jesus talked about the Pharisees and how they messed up uh, the law of Moses and made up their own doctrine and later wrote it down in the the Talmud in Babylonian Talmud that used to be the oral law, law during Jesus's time and they had their own um, ideas how things would um, be done and so then when he came um, he put things straight he used Paul to put solid doctrine in place but even after uh, the first disciples and Paul founded these um, new uh, um, churches, there were already false teachers coming into these churches and uh, were trying to um, deceive the believers. We know about the Judaizers that came into the church and try to deceive the people uh, and try to tell them that they have to follow the the law of Moses. That they had to be circumcised um, and, and follow the law. And the apostles, the first uh, apostles in the church of uh, the first church in Jerusalem, they said clearly, I mean, if you are familiar with the writing, like for instance, in Acts, um, and in Galatians, they, clearly they taught that the Gentiles did not have to follow the law of Moses. They had to, um, I think the two that had to stay away is uh, blood, uh, no, meat offered to idols and blood. Okay, and of course, um, 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 sexual immorality. That's what they had to stay away from. But everything else, uh, they did not have to follow the law of Moses at all. And that's what Paul taught. But of course, these Judaizers, they came in and said, no, you have to do this and you have to do that. You can't eat this and you can't eat that. You have to follow all the, um, you know, all the feasts and, um, you know, the Sabbath and everything. And Paul says, no, that is not the way it is. We are now in Christ, we are a new creature, and there is a new covenant, the old one is over. The covenant under the law of Moses was only temporary, and it was uh, until Messiah would come. 
but I'm not talking about that today. I really want to talk about uh, gender, biblical gender equality, but I need to build it on this. I need to um, have people understand that so much deception has been going on since the beginning, really since the beginning. So when I wrote my book, The Mystery of Adam, my book is based on my um, discovery. Uh, should I say discovery? I don't know if I should say discovery, but uh, I clearly uh, saw, clearly saw uh, by studying the original text, the original words, that this first human being was not a man at all it was a man and a woman in one um, so this first human being was very different than the the two human beings that were um formed after kind of god took the side of that first human being to form the woman and it's very different so you can read my book and um I know lots of people still think, you know, that um, I am teaching wrong things. But no, if you do your studies, that is probably the first deception, you know, that happened in the garden. That um, the woman was, uh, it was done probably not far, you know, after the creation that the woman was subjugated. Um, and that the man took over the ruling. I mean, God said that right away to the to the to to the couple. Okay, that the man will rule over you. Why? Not because God created them that way, because He created them equal, but because of the sin, the sinful nature. And so, but this deception continued because the man was the stronger one. Um, he kept dominating the woman. Of course, any strong person will dominate the not so strong person. So it's not just the women that were actually subjugated, but um, everybody was subjugated uh, and the strongest male just took over. Uh, it just seems to be harder on women uh, than men. And uh, maybe that is even stereotypical. I don't know. But I know that men suffered quite a lot um, because of the sinful nature and because of this uh, domineering um, tendency of human beings. And I'm not just saying the man. Human beings, when you put two women together, they have a tendency to, to really dominate each other too and control each other. So we have just a horrible uh, tendency to control and to dominate and that's not just the man okay but when you put a man and a woman together it's usually and i'm saying usually the man if he is a strong man okay and that he will dominate the woman and so over centuries uh, the woman was just dominated more than the other way around. Uh, today, we have women more and more in charge of things. And so we see kind of the same thing going on. If a, you put a woman in charge and you give her the power, she'll do the same thing. Okay, I'm not saying that men uh, are worse than women, but over the, the, the history, the course of history, that's just the way it happened. That women were subjugated quite a lot and especially in the church especially in the church and we have not put that away we've had a hundred years of uh, women's suffrage and where well, we had equal rights but that seems to be stopping at most of the churches okay most of the churches continue subjugating women and of course it's because of all this deception that has been going on from the beginning not just the beginning but if you look at i mean jesus came to put away 
with this subjugation. Okay, he came and he gave equal rights to women. We know that the Holy Spirit was poured out on men and women. Um, there's an Old Testament quote which Peter used in Acts um, that men uh, that that sons and daughters will be prophesying. Sons and daughters will be prophesying. That's that's uh, uh, you know a, a prophecy. So sons and daughters will prophesy. That means sons and daughters will have the Holy Spirit equally. And of course, we know what uh, Paul taught, that in the church, we are equal. There's one body and there's no uh, difference between the, the, the organs in the body. The, the eye is not, you know, above the little finger or the eye is not above the mouth or um, the heart or whatever. Okay, well, the heart is not above the eye. So there's not a hierarchy in the church. It is equal. Um, and now, have we um, come away with that from that? Yes. Since the Roman Catholic Church was founded, and I believe even before, um, false teachers came into the churches and they tried to put a, a back a hierarchy, or not back, but they start. They tried to start a hierarchy, in which you know the the presbyters or the uh, bishops or the elders or the deacons have more power than the rest. And that is not the case at all, okay? You study Paul, there is no such, such thing. Yes, of course, he advised that um, older sisters or brothers should be respected and followed, okay? Um, and that people that are new in the faith should be learning in silence or not silence but quietness and that he didn't just tell women that was a general um, arrangement that men and women need to learn in quietness that was just the way people are were supposed to learn so then we go into uh, especially first corinthians in which paul laid down the way church was supposed to function. And if you read 1 Corinthians 12, you know about the gifts and that these gifts were poured out to everybody in the church. There's no distinct, distinction. Uh, you can't say, oh, only men have the gift of prophecy or teaching or uh, evangelizing or whatever. No, you, every believer has a gift and, and, and the Holy Spirit does not distinguish between um, gender. Everybody has a gift, and it, there, there are not male or female gifts. And so Paul said that clearly in chapter 12. And then when we go to chapter 14 in 1 Corinthians, we see the order of the assembly. Now, when you look at the King James Version, the King James um, Version is a good translation, but it is really um, gender specific. In other words, he only addresses the brothers, not the sisters. In the original text, it is actually neutral. Okay, so the newer translations do that. Like for instance, I have here the NIV, New International Version, um, okay, they address, they have other problems, okay, I just wanted to say, say that, but they address brothers and sisters. Now, in, in a verse says, now brothers and sisters, if I come to you and speak in tongues, so he's addressing both, uh, you go down to, um, Uh, 26 what then shall we say brothers and sisters when you come together each of you has a hymn okay 
or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. This is not a hierarchy, okay? But that's what the deceivers did. The false prophets, the false teachers, the, sh the wolves in sheep's clothing. They came into the church um, and destroyed the sound doctrine. This is what Paul taught. Paul taught no hierarchy. He taught everybody has something co to contribute to the assembly of believers. Now, specifically, and, and it got really bad when the Roman emperors took over the church. They took over the church. They put themselves in the church as God and then determined how the church was supposed to be run and what doctrine was accepted and what doctrine wasn't. And that continued with the popes who took over for the emperors and now became uh, or were put in the same spot as almost, well, not almost, they were God, okay? God in um, uh, on this earth, Messiah, uh, uh, Christ, Jesus on this earth. And um, I have talked about that um, uh, quite a lot. I think, too, um, that one of the popes specifically, just a, a, a pope that hasn't been, let me see, what pope was it? Um, I need to look at it if I can find it really fast because I don't want to waste um, time. But maybe it would be good to say that because I don't think I have shown it yet. But on my uh, Facebook group called Great Deceptions of the End Times, I actually uh, put it on there. It was Pope Pius the. 11th on april the 30th 1922 he said you know that i am the holy father the representative of god on the earth the vicar of christ which means i am god on the earth that's what he said if you want to see the quote um go to my facebook group great deceptions of the end times and i put it there so, yes, that's what the popes did say from the beginning. Even the emperors, they said that. And so, those were the people, those were uh, the, the, the man of lawlessness, which Paul said in uh, Second Thessalonians, that would come in the church and put himself into the church as God and he destroyed sound doctrine he destroyed the doctrine that was given to Paul and that continued this deception you know continued until the reformation and even the reformation didn't change everything but when you read um 1 Corinthians 14 and 12 you can see exactly what Paul's instructions were, and that was changed. These instructions were for both men and women, okay? Now, why in the world do they then come up, or people come up with this idea that we were not, or women are supposed to be silent? Well, it is actually even in uh, written in 1 Corinthians 14, but we are going to have to really look at that right after these instructions how worship is supposed to be conducted in verse 34 it actually says women should remain silent in the churches they are not allowed to speak but must be in sub, uh, submission as the law says if they want to acquire about something they should ask their own husbands at home what is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. First, we need to think about, wait a minute. First, he says, women are supposed to be speaking. And now he turns around and says, women are not supposed to speak. Now, how in the world does that fit together? Now, in the King James Version, of course, it does fit together, right? Because it is 
uh, translated with brothers or brethren or men. And then when we come to 34, it makes a little sense that now they're saying, oh, women should not. But we know that women were included in the first church. That is basic thing. That's what Jesus already taught in the upper room. Men and women were together, not just the men. And men and women could speak or pray or prophesy. We know that. So why in the world would now say, Paul say, women should remain silent in the church? It does not make sense. And what does the law say? What law is he talking about? Not the law of Moses. The law of Moses doesn't say that. What law are they talking about? Are they talking about public law, uh, like Roman law during that time, or Greek law during that time? Is he talking about Talmud? Um, and then it's here disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. Uh, was it disgraceful? Yeah, maybe in those days it may have been disgraceful, but then he may be talking about the public law. But nevertheless, we know that some old manuscripts, these two verses are at the end. Okay, so that made some people think, why in the world would Paul address something like that that is so disrupting the flow of this whole chapter? And then some would have it at the end. So some came up with this idea that this may have been in the margin because that is pretty normal. They wrote a letter and in the margin of the letter, they would put the questions that were asked. So in other words, the Corinthians asked questions of Paul, how should we handle this, blah, blah, blah. And um, Paul was answering. So if that would have been the case, Remember, these letters didn't have chapters. These letters didn't even have punctuation. So we don't know if it's questions or not questions. So we would have to look con in the context if there were actually even questions. So if they would have been questions, we, it would have been more like this. Women should remain silent in church, in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. If they want to acquire about something, they should ask their own husband at home, for it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in church. This is how it could have been worded um, on the margin okay, of this letter, and Paul would have answered, wait a minute, no. This is the way um, church should be conducted, okay? It should be conducted that way. Not, oh, it is disgraceful for women to speak, or the law says women shouldn't be speaking, okay? Remember, these um, churches during Paul's time, they were all house churches, so they were really somewhat public because people came to the assembly and especially in the Greek um, in the Greek culture, women were not supposed to be seen. But we know that Jesus allowed women. We know that woman that came and washed, um, poured this uh, ointment over Jesus' feet and, and cleaned it with her hair. That wasn't um, in, in Martha and Mary, you know, um, Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus listening and Jesus says, Martha, no, Mary chose the better thing. So Jesus allowed women um, to publicly listen to him. Okay. So, Paul was the same way. He, um, you know, allowed, for instance, Priscilla um, to teach uh, Apollos. So Paul really believed in equality. 
Um, he may have been, you know, influenced by his Talmudic teaching. And it took a while for him to change these old, like we say right here, um, uh, laws and rules. But he definitely heard the Holy Spirit say equality for women in the church. Because that's what he taught. Um, and so I believe also that these two verses here, 34 and 35, were actually in the margin. Okay? They were actually in the margin. And that's what the people read. This is what was asked. And then Paul answered in the letter and told them, this is the way the church needs to be run. Not this, oh, um, it is disgraceful for women to speak. Or they should wait until they get home and learn from their husbands. Yes, they shouldn't be interrupting the church. No um, uh, new Christian should interrupt, you know, in the church and, uh, con uh, you know, uh, create confusion. People that learn supposed to be learning in silence. No, well, actually, it's more quietness, not silence. Uh, silence means no talking at all. But... Um, it's more the word that is being used there is more quietness, okay? Quietness is, is the one. So, um, again, at the end in 40, he says, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. That is what's most important, that everything is be done in a, a orderly, in an orderly way. So, read this again and, and just see how this verse 34 and 35 just does not fit in there. If you know, if you st have studied Paul, um, you just know that this is very unusual. I know, for instance, we could talk about Timothy right now, but I don't have the time to do that because it says also there that women should be quiet but again, there also learned women were addressed. Remember, during Paul's time, most women were not educated. They didn't even know how to read, okay, people. They were not even educated or could read. And so it was pretty normal to say, hey, um, you know what? If you are uneducated and you're just learning, be quiet. Okay, and wait for an appropriate time to ask questions, whether that's your husband at home, if your husband is educated, or, or whether it is asking an elder or, you know, some more experienced uh, believer. Uh, that's a possibility too. But everything Paul said needs to be done in orderly, in an orderly fashion. But he never said women couldn't you know, speak in the church because that would have been against the Holy Spirit. Paul would have limited 50% of the Holy Spirit. And that is not what we are, I mean, what's happening. The Holy Spirit was poured out on men and women. And so men and women need to speak. That's just the way it is. So, I will come to an end. If you want to know more about this biblical gender equality, um, and, is, and specifically um, this uh, false deception that the first human being was a man, please read my book. And if you have been listening to my videos, you know that I have uncovered a lot of deceptions and that is what my intention is to uncover deceptions there is lots of deceptions especially when we are talking about women in the church today women in the church are still mainly or most of the time subjugated okay they don't have the right to even um practice the gift their gifts of the Holy Spirit, okay, which is pretty bad. It's not even so bad against the women, 
but it's really bad against the Holy Spirit. It's sinning against the Holy Spirit. That's just the way I see it. You limit the Holy Spirit, you're against the Holy Spirit, not necessarily women. So think about that. I'm coming to an end. Let the Holy Spirit guide you as usual. And a big thank you to all my subscribers. I am just really, really thankful for you all listening to my videos. And um, I will see you, see you next time.